And then once I see it pop up in the old YouTubes, all right, I will do this. Click here any time to post on YouTube. Let me hit this button. There we go. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here watching. This is our first EO Wisconsin podcast live stream question Q&A. I don't know what we're going to call this, but it's the first and uh, we're glad that you came and hopefully after however long this is going to go, you get a good piece of value out of that. With that, my name is Clark Sell and with me today I have Michelle Hecken. Michelle, welcome to whatever this is going to be, the craziness that it is. Who are you? <laughs> Hi, Clark. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'm, I'm really happy to be here and I'm super excited to do the workshop for EO Wisconsin, Wisconsin chapter um, next week, Thursday in person. And I'm so glad we get to chat for whatever this is, you know, so ask away, happy, happy to share um, whatever, wherever this conversation goes. Let's have some fun. Yeah, me, I, I am as well. And I know the first time we met one another, um, I th think we stayed on the phone probably an hour too long and, and had a great conversation and a topic at hand. I, you know, uh, greedily speaking, I'm excited to have because um, I need it. So like if nobody else gets any value out of it, that's their problem. But I'm going to suck it all in uh, and I can't wait. So um, let's start with you live in Canada and Correct. look down upon us in the States every day, physically, that is. I mean, we are lower <laughs> for those who are geographically challenged. Um, and you do a lot of travel back and forth between. Is there, uh, before we even get into what offboarding is, whatnot, um, yeah. do, you, do you see big cultural like differences between the two countries for as close as we are? Do you see... Um, are we as different or as similar as we may or may not think? Oh, I love that question. Didn't see it coming, but I, I love know. it. So <laughs> yes, yes, right. It's cool. Um, so from a cultural perspective, um, you ask me who I am. So I'm half Canadian and I'm half German. So I grew up half in Germany, half in Canada. Why is that relevant to your question? Well, I'm used to straddling the, the cultural bridge between two different cultures. And so many of us think, oh, the U.S. or especially Germans or the rest of the world thinks that Canada and U.S. is the same. And it really isn't. I mean, for many reasons that put politics aside, <laughs> even though, it's, you know, the day Please. after the, the midterm elections. But let's not go there. Um, but I think just from a point of view, how people do business, let, let's take that as an example. So in my former company that I had for 25 years, we had clients all around the world, but we barely had any clients in Canada. So it was a multi, multi million dollar company and I had no clients at home, barely, very few. Um, and so why do I say this? For me, being half German, Right. The Canadian marketplace, when we talk about business, it, it's just a little bit harder. Um, I know Americans joke, Canadians are so polite and we always say sorry and la la la. And, and it's not untrue. So when we look from a cultural perspective, my half German is almost more similar to the American way of doing business. Mm. So what I've observed over the past probably 30 years of doing business globally is that um, Americans will buy more on value proposition than Canadians will. Interesting. Um, if something makes sense, they're going to go like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Let me try this. Um, or yes, that makes sense. Give me more information. Or yes, I'm interested or no, I'm not. Uh, those are very similar. Mm -hmm. Canadians are very different. Canadians are like, okay, let's meet, let's talk. Um, let's meet again. Let's talk. And it's just a much longer process of doing business because it really is a lot. And that's just my subject experience. I'm not saying it's a fact, sure. but it's more about who knows you. And it's a long process and not so much buying a value proposition. And just from a business point of view, it's more about community. It's That's a very different culture, if that makes sense from a business point of view. It totally does. And, and the reason I started kind of with that question 
is, you know, I, I had the, the opportunity to work for a Bulgarian company and the way we did the, the culture of the company was drastically different than that of the United States. And it was, it was wonderful, right? I got a real good perspective for the fact that, um, in America, I don't think we value, um, kind of that work-life balance by any stretch. And if you read the news or you kind of play into the, the fodder that's out there, you know, to have your own business and to work, I, I think it perpetuates the problem without necessarily measurable ramifications, right? We don't really necessarily know is working harder. Is that achieving your goal or is it a point of diminishing returns? Um, more isn't always good, if you will. So, um, it, it was a big eye opener for me. And, um, now, having said that, you know, I work seven days a week, 365 days a year, which is why you're here in the first place. So, <laughs> wow. There's so many things I could comment on with what you just said. That would be a podcast on its own, just taking that statement apart. <laughs> right, right. It's wrong. So <clears throat> we're both in EO. Um, and for those that may be watching this and don't know what that means, there's an organization, membership organization called Entrepreneurs Organization. It's a worldwide thing with, I guess we call it localized chapters. Um, and you've been in it for 15 years. I've been in it for 12 months. What? Oh, okay. oh yes. <laughs> I, I don't know what it means. You very much know what it means. Um, so like, what does it mean to you? Like where, where in Michelle's, um, journey, like, why did you land there? What has it done for you? And, you know, I'm kind of slowly building into the offboarding, but you know, culture, multi, multi-country type thing. Like why was EO a thing for you? Okay. Awesome. I love it. Yes. And, and I do want to come back to the work-life balance cultural issue that you <laughs> talked about earlier um, because it's so juicy and there's so much to unpack there. Oh, yeah. um, so, you know, EO, I, I started my company when I was really young, 22. And um, I tell people I was 12, so they don't do the math, but really I was 22. So when I started, I, I was really, I didn't have any business background. I didn't know what I was doing. I had moved to a brand new country from Germany in 93. And I didn't know anybody, anything, how business was done. And I worked in a silo for a really long time, trying to make it up as I went along. And as we all do as entrepreneurs, yep. right? Like yep. That's typically 99% of our stories, unless, you know, there's a family business. Play. And so I did that. And once I kind of got around to close, close to a million and, and I offboarded myself through that, but regardless, I, I, I got like close to my first million. And I had a mentor and I really learned so much from having a mentor that I wanted more of that. And at that time, I actually didn't know about entrepreneurs organization. So I, I joined a different organization, then found out about EO. And I just instantly felt at home. And we have this term that we use in our entrepreneurs organization. It's called instimacy, which means in mm -hmm instant intimacy and we call it instimacy we can meet another eo member from around the world we've never met them before and we will immediately be on that same playing field and can have a conversation about business about leadership whatever it is yep. so i value that i have friends all over the world from this i have resources that i go to people come to me ask me questions you just I mean, it is lonely at the top, and we know, and, and there's a lot of guilt that we often have. Um, there's a lot of permissions we need to give ourselves. When we look amongst our peers at home, there's no, if you don't have a network, which entrepreneurs organization has a local chapter in, in almost every country around the world, there's more than 14 or 15,000 members now. And so you have a group of like-minded spirits that you can learn from and you know because like, especially as a woman I don't know if 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 guys feel the same thing but when my kids were little it was about are you going to volunteer in school and are you going to do this and 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 for me that answer was no I'm not going to do that and and so there was this disconnect of 
my peers and my friends, and I didn't have anybody to share ideas with to, and to grow. So we all know you cannot build an amazing company, an amazing business, and an, and an amazing life in isolation. It just doesn't work. Yeah, it's funny you brought up the 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 family life balance because as the resident dude on this call, um, I wanted to be involved with the family, right? I wanted to be at the family things and I wanted it to be a priority, which doesn't follow in the stigmatism of whatever dads being involved and whatnot. And um, it is, I mean, it's hard. Life is hard. It's like we don't, you know, I look at the life my kids have to live while, you know, <clears throat> privilege versus some, I still don't understand it. Like they have pressures that are, uh, they have opportunities that are fantastic and pressures I can't understand. Right. Cause it's not the way I grew yeah. up. Um, no, totally. It, it, it's interesting. Cause, um, talking about the kids and the family and all of those things, I mean, that was one of the reasons why I off boarded myself from my company in the first place, because, um, the work life balance, um, and I'm going to watch my language because I, I need to be a good girl, but work life balance is a lie. It doesn't exist <laughs> for entrepreneurs. Let me tell you, we are chasing a work life balance that is completely elusive to us. So, work life balance came up, um, you know, early or probably mid 1900s, like late in the 60s, 50s, maybe 70s, when more women entered the workforce. And so what happened? And it's not that different today. It's better, but it's not that different, right? We're, we're working, we're still making dinner, we're still buying groceries, we're still taking care of the kids, all of those things. And so work-life balance was a concept which was intended to help women who are rejoining the workforce to find that balance, mm, okay? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. what is balance? Balance means everything stands still. But life doesn't stand still. And as entrepreneurs, we also have days we want to work 16 hours. We're passionate about something. We're just in it. And, and then we feel guilty because we're not doing a nine-five work-life balance thing. And it really doesn't work for us. We don't need that extra guilt. What we need is to figure out where our priorities are. And I think Richard Branson, I, I don't want to misquote him, but it was something along the lines of, I don't worry if it's work or if it's play. It's all life. It's all life. And when we say work-life balance, it, it sounds like work is not life. Work is yep. so awful that yep. we have to balance it out with something. And then we, we our FOMO increases. Was, I should be doing something. I should be going out with friends. I should be doing this. I truly believe work-life balance doesn't work for entrepreneurs. I feel we need to get more into a flow where everything works together and we have the right priorities. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, I, I'm very grateful for the fact that I've somehow am surviving in doing what we're doing. Um, I, there are days where I'm like, I, I don't know how, but, uh, yeah. I, I enjoy what I do, right? It's not exactly. Um, we all do, right? And it and it's is it stressful at times? Of course it is. Like I, yeah, like I, there are times where I have you know lose hope and not sure where to go and need to find a tribe. I think that's what really led me to EO is looking for the tribe that I didn't have, right? I was correct. I, you can have multiple tribes, but I wasn't in. I wasn't in enough of them, if you will, and. Uh, and knowing that, I guess I should say the exposure, the awareness to others to see like, oh, you're not the only crazy one in the room. Um, this is how some of this stuff works. Oh, okay. You're, you're working away at oddball hours. Well, yeah, because sometimes that's the only time that my brain works a certain way. And so I try to jam those right. activities, which don't fall into that nine to five spectrum because... No, I'm just not really wired that way. And and I do try to like, you know, there's a point where everybody can kind of overlap and, you know, in your company and, and have some um, momentum from that. But at the same token, I try to never push that down either because, you know, if somebody works better at seven at night than they do at seven in the morning, what do I care? Like, 
How what is does it, it matter? Exactly? As long right. as everything's done, right? As long as it gets done. And, and, and you can do that because those people have responsibilities that are occurred to them, right? We often get sucked into the nine to five as well because when we think about servant leadership, which is an amazing concept, yep. we sometimes misinterpret servant leadership to mean that we need to do the same as everybody else. Where we need to be seen, we need to be in the office, we need to be there because otherwise we're not leading by example. Right. And I again beg to differ on on that interpretation, not on servant yeah. leadership, but on yeah, that yeah. false interpretation that I, yeah. I believe is false, is because when we give ourselves permission to purposefully define what we're best at and where we bring the most value to the business, then we can give our teams the same permission to do that. And now everybody's working within their responsibility. You don't have to micromanage and you don't have that guilt. So when I started my translation company, we had project managers and translators all over the world. My clients were all over the world in different time zones. So I had to find a way to set this up. Otherwise I would have been getting phone calls all through the night. Yeah. So it wasn't possible. So I, it kind of forced me and, and scarcity sharpens the mind. It's one of my, my, my yes. favorite mantras. Right? If you have to, you will come up with those ways. And, and one of the reasons I'm so excited to, to talk next week is um, after I sold my company, I, I took the couple of years to really kind of condense what I did down into actionable chunks because I suffered and, and until I figured this out and, and we all do. And there's a much easier way to look at it, but we need to shift our thinking and collectively, collectively in our EO community, that's what we're about is innovation, new ideas, thought leadership, making each other's lives better and lifting each other up. Yeah. So <clears throat> we've hinted on offboarding, which is you're the the expert in this. And, you know, when I started to kind of plan out where we were going to go for the year and whatnot, I can, I can, you know, when you give somebody the keys and they're supposed to drive, they could take the road that they want to. So while I get feedback from everybody, whatnot, I'd look at the things and go, that's, that's important. Like I, like that's a topic I haven't heard before. And one of my kind of big aha moments when I first started in EO was actually on my, I don't know if I call it my first official day, but we had an event and I was there and I realized that it was the first time that I had genuinely sat down and gave myself permission, gave myself time to step away from the activities of the business and start to work on the business. And I realized that I hadn't been doing that. Um, and I was mortified that, I mean, it seems like so simple. Like, what do you mean? Like, how could you not be doing that? Um, but the reality is, I think as, as an entrepreneur, we are constantly working on it. Right. It's always in the back of our mind. I mean, I wake up and I'm like, shit, I got these 12 things that really need to be done. And, oh, I should do it this way or that way. Um, but why do you think, like, why do you think that that's such a systemic problem? I mean, I, I think most of us get trapped into, trapped in our business in some regards before yeah. we even, we even, do the thing that helps us scale and eventually your technique of offboarding. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, we're always told we're reading, we're learning, we talk about it, work on your business, not in your business. And, and, and I call it the EO Kool-Aid or the leadership Kool-Aid. And, and it's, it's you know, the, this Kool-Aid though is really good for you, right? It's really good for you. But nobody gives you the real recipe on how to make it. So yes. we don't know how, right? And, and the other thing that happens is when we start a business or take over a business, right? We're focusing on the business. What do we do? We, we make a plan, a three-year or five-year plan. We set certain goals. We do all of those things. And that's great. And before we know it, we are serving our business, which, which is also great, yeah. except we completely forget 
why we're doing this in the first place. And then what we think is, oh, money. Okay, that's great. I'm going to build something. I'm going to do this now so that later it's going to be better, right? We, we've all read this. Entrepreneurs work 100 hours so that they don't have to work later. Uh, but here's the thing. I believe that you can have both. Right. And I think the other reason why we get so stuck is we don't start with a clear outcome for our life. The business is a part of our life. It's not separate, which is why I always have such a beef with work life balance, because it's an extension of us. Yeah, our yeah. culture is an extension of what we believe. Right. It's part of our life. And so why do we only plan that? part? So what where I come from is and, and when I work with clients, and, and I do it myself, is what do you want your life to look like 10 years from now? Not five years because our entrepreneurial brain goes directly yeah. into the yeah. how and is it possible and if it's feasible, but bigger, right? Like when we're little and, oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a fireman. I want to be a pilot. I want to be a princess. I want to have three princes and three unicorns. Doesn't matter if it's possible, but we say it because yep. as kids, we can give ourselves permission to, to think as big as we want. And as we forget. So to me, one of the reasons why people or why so many entrepreneurs get stuck is one, they don't know how to get out properly. They don't have their real why. And, and I'm not talking about Simon Sinek's why, although that, that kind of plays into it, but your own why, why are you doing this? What is purpose of your life what do you want your life to look like and not just 10 years from now what do you want it to look like consistently every day yeah. because yeah we're always working in the future but as entrepreneurs that's also frustrating because it's hard to celebrate little wins yeah. right so sometimes when we get stuck in our business which is another reason why we get stuck is we take comfort in wrapping little bows on things sometimes. And we don't look at what is the value to the organization? What is the value of me doing that? I'm kind of need just a quick win, right? So that's one of the things. And, and, and if we don't methodically and purposefully choose which part of the business we are better to leave to others, then we're delegating and we're doing it randomly because we just want to get stuff off of our plate. And we're not thinking about how much value does it bring to the business. We're not thinking about, do I love doing this? Right. And, and we're not thinking about how much time we're spending on it. So when we purposefully, instead of delegating, think about the responsibilities that tie in to what we want our life to look like and how we want to feel every day running our business, not just in 10 years, because that's wishing our life away. Yeah. Then we can purposefully get out and take the right steps one at a time without rocking the boat like crazy um, and do it purposefully rather than just say, I'm overwhelmed. I got rid of some of this stuff. Yeah, so you got me a little verklempt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you said something in there, uh, which I, I, I had, I haven't heard in a while. I heard it. I've heard it a little differently, which is, you know, we start businesses to work a hundred hours a week, so we won't work forty hours for somebody else. And I just exactly I just laugh my ass off every time I hear that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> because that's not the point. It's not right. the point, right? We don't need to do that. We just need to be more aware and purposeful around how we do that. And, but, but we need to know why, yeah. right? If we don't know where we're going and we release there, and if we just say, I'm going to grow my business, what does that mean? Right. Hey, are you going to grow it to a hundred million? Are you going to grow it to a billion? Are you going to grow a lifestyle business? What are you going to do? Because the decisions you make along the way will serve you and your life differently. Yeah. So if you don't know where you're going, you might build something and then wake up one day like that song by the talking heads and say, how did I get here? Yeah. So earlier I said, I, uh, seven days, 365, I work a lot. I'm not an example. You're, you're here, um, to help me stop doing this. I'll just, that's, and others, but I'm, you know, I'm first in line. <laughs> talk to me about this. Talk to me about this, this notion of offboarding. Okay. And I want to preface it. You no, know, you're working a hundred hours, hours a week. 
and you're completely happy and you are within your purpose and that's what you absolutely love doing, there is nothing wrong with that. Like, I also feel we need to get rid of that notion that right. working a lot is bad, right? Yeah. Sometimes we work 100 hours a week and, and that fi that's fine. Where I'm coming from is let's be clear on why we're doing it. Let's be clear on how we feel every day yep. when we're doing it. And let's and have that awareness of, of how we can design our life and our business to serve our life and our it, business, if that makes any sense. Yeah. And, and I want to be, I want to be upfront, intentional, vulnerable, all the bulls in this and say that, you know, I don't always work seven days a week. Um, and when I do, it's not always eight hours a day or 10 or 12. Um, mm -hmm. I do prioritize things like sleep first. If I'm tired, I'm going to bed. I don't care what time it is, yeah. whatnot. Um, that didn't used to be the case. I used to burn the midnight oil and work the, you know, sleep two or three hours to the damage of myself. So like, I recognize that. Um, I'll also say that I am a big fan of intentionality of living one's life and I'm not the best at it by any stretch. Um, and my hours aren't always the most productive. Um, it hasn't been mm -hmm. until recently to where I realized not all tasks are tasks that I should be doing. And it's not that I want to say drop value of what needs to be done, because I do believe yeah. everybody should be working on something that is valuable. And while there is work that you can do, you can, you should also be able to say, is that work, does that work need to be done to meet our objective today? Right. So yeah. Yes, and by me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. So there are things that I could be doing, sure. And and it's good for the business, right? Air quotes good. But is it moving the rock forward for what we need today, right? Sure, it's good for the exactly. business, but maybe it's not maybe it's not doing anything to build revenue and we need revenue now, right? And right. Um and in that I've also realized that you know, money I just have <laughs> Just happen to have some cash on my desk, right? It's, <laughs> it's doing no good sitting here. This is this is nothing. Like it, it's of no value sitting on my desk, and um, and thus prioritizing who is best at doing what, so that your hours that you spend are the most productive and fulfilling to you would be the most productive and fulfilling to everybody. And when the team is small, that's really hard because often we all have to wear different color pants and we don't like all the colors because there just isn't the resources um, to do, you know, to have somebody do each of those things. Um, yeah. But I hear all that being said, like you, you, you know, our first conversation was like, you got to get rid of some of this stuff because, and it really hit home to me when I was like, I can't step out of my business um, and somebody else run it. Like there's no right. amount of paperwork and documentation and all that kind of shit that I could put down and say, cool, I'm selling it here. You go like, that's not going to work. Like it is, um, I I'm too wrapped up into that. And I don't mean that negatively. Um, but no. it's also not good for what we've built. If I, if I do need to exit for some reason or, well, two years ago, I got in a snowboarding accident and I was laid up for too long. That's not yeah. good, right? It's not good if I, if, if everything is centered around, um, you know, a person and there's no fallback. So, so offboarding, yeah. right? You've, you've put a nice discreet bow on something like, what is, what does that mean? Okay. I love it. So I, I want to start with the premise that just because we're small doesn't mean we can't do this. So let, let me explain a little bit how the process works without taking too much away workshop that we're going to do next right. week. Yeah, like everybody but should be really, coming to really, the workshop. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. So, you know, offering is not just for entrepreneurs. It's not just for the people on the top. So when I, when I started offboarding myself, the reason what my, what driver was, so I had two small kids under three. Okay. And I was working 20 hour days consistently for months. 
I that was building, right? Of course, we have to put time in to build and we burn the midnight oil and it, it is what it is, right? But we don't need to keep doing that. And I woke up one day, uh, I'll show the story next, uh, when I realized that I was working so much that I got fired from my own life by my doctor, my hairdresser, my friends. And I realized that if I don't make a change, my kids are going to fire me from their lives one day because I yep. will not have been there. Yep. And right there and then is where I decided, why do I have to choose? I want to be a mom. I loved it. Didn't want to be a full-time mom, though. I want the company and grow it, but I didn't want to work 20-hour days. And yep. I decided I, I want to have both. And and who who is anybody to tell me I can do that? A lot of a lot of people told me. Yep. I can't oh yeah, totally. Yeah, a lot and of opinions so, go around these days. A lot of opinions go oh forever. <laughs> and, and so when we talk about the, my goodness, all the stuff I heard, right? Um, that that's a whole different chapter, um, whole different conversation about how to defy the naysayers and stay true to what you're building. But um, so let's talk about how does it impact your business when everything is tied to you. So what I realized when I made that decision, and it took me about a year to off myself from all of the things I wanted to offboard myself from, and I did it on purpose. So what I did and, and what I always start with the process is figuring out what is on your plate. Show me one, one entrepreneur who has a job description that has been told <laughs> paid a job description. Nobody has a job description, right? <laughs> oh yeah, we're, we're doing all this stuff. Nobody has a job description. So we write down everything that is on your plate. So if I were to say to you, okay, Clark, here's an Excel sheet, write down everything you do and try and group it by responsibilities and tasks. Okay. And, and so then look at what do you love doing and, and, and not just what you're at, what do you love doing? You know, when you think of a day and say, oh, I had best day. You're yep. energized. It gives you energy versus yep. drains your energy. And there are things that we're good at that still drain our energy. So for example, yep. I'm a great oh, yeah. writer. I mean, I started my career as a translator. I'm a great writer. I would procrastinate on end to do that. Right. And I'll talk about that in the workshop too. Pro procrastination is a great indicator on making yep. those purposeful choices because it gives us a lot of information. So when I, when we looked at that, then we, what do you love doing? What do you love doing of everything that you do? We look at how much value does each of those activities bring to your company and to you as the entrepreneur? Okay. And how much time do you spend on it? Then we have this really beautiful, clear picture of, oh, okay. Wow. First of all, there's way more than I thought there was. It usually takes a couple of iterations till yep. we're completely honest about what we're really doing um, and, and where the value is. And then as a next step, we can say, okay, cool. What do I procrastinate on? Let me make sure I'm not just choosing something randomly, right? Is there really value? And, and sometimes we have to be a little bit lenient with ourselves too, because some things may need to stay on have to be able to tie some bows onto things yep. and have that gratification at the end of the day because we're always living in the future so we want to make sure there's something there for us that still feeds our soul but with intention and purpose not just i have too much on my plate let me get this report off of desk let me get this off of my desk because then we're delegating tasks yep. and and not responsibility so what happens then it feels amazing Yay, I got this off my plate. I don't have to do this, right? Then you do it again and again and again. And all of a sudden you have this mental load and you got to try and remember, who did I give that to? What was the deadline? So you still have the same amount of work. You're not doing it. You're now managing it. Yep. And that's not offboarding responsibilities, right? You can let somebody drive the bus to where they want to go as long as you tell them where they need to go. And you don't need to worry about if they're taking this road or this road, uh, as long as they get there on time with the bus act yep. as agreed, right? So it's a more purposeful approach because we're always told delegate, delegate, delegate. And and I know it's nomenclature and, and I know there's, there's good ways of delegating, but just taking stuff off of your desk mindlessly 
is not helpful. And it's one of the reasons, back to your previous questions, when we get out, that's one of the things that gets us sucked back in because we're still thinking about it all the time, right? It yep. still like basically keeps us. And, and so where I see the benefit um, on, on a bigger level, not just for the entrepreneur, is that if we can all within an organization work 80% of the time on what energizes us. And, and, and notice I'm not saying 100% because, yep. you know, there's always stuff we've got to do. Um, but 80%, then we have a different organization. We have happier people. We have a better culture. We have ownership for <clears throat> employees and teams, which is something we all say we should get, we should do. And we try and do it with stock options and shares. And, and by the way, I'm super excited to hear Byron speak about that because he has an amazing system that really, really helps employees have ownership. But so I, the so, way I think yeah, so we're, the we're, we're going go, to go together really well. well. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's awesome. I had a chat with him where we were just kind of coordinating and seeing how can we bring even more value combining our brains. So that was really cool. So there's ways to do that, but it doesn't have to be about money. And sometimes we think I don't have anybody. I don't have anybody to, to do this, right? So we can shift things around. For example, if you have five people with the same job description, right? I guarantee you that you can use this exercise for them, right? There's going to be somebody who maybe doesn't like talking to clients. Maybe somebody doesn't like doing the invoices or the admin, right? And those are things that can maybe be swapped. Yeah. And and now you don't have to hire anybody, but you get a higher revenue per employee. People are more done and they have ownership and responsibility. So it's not just for the entrepreneur. It cascades through the yeah. entire organization, allowing people to work out what they're best at. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're talking so about that's kind of culture of shift. Culture. Yeah, it is. It, it creates a massive culture shift, but of course it will because the the organization's culture is always a reflection of who we are as the entrepreneur, as the CEO, yep. right? Yep. We shift culture because culture is an extension of us. And 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 I think those are the two main responsibilities of the CEO. Build a kick-ass culture and drive revenue. Yeah. Um, and everything else is a distraction, right? That's our job, yeah. bottom line, I believe. <clears throat> no, you're right. And it and it I you know, I'm just going to use my own experiences because I, I don't know, that's all I have really. It, um, you know, I really <laughs> oh, I realized, are. you know, um, a number of years ago, like my job is to just unscrew everybody. You know, it, I could be as good as I want to be in, in a certain area, but it's also not good for me to just be working in that area and not working on the business, right? I, yeah. And, and I think... I in the tech sector, if you will, we often get, we often fool ourselves because, you know, said founder or whatnot is sitting there banging out features for whatever, the website, uh, when, <clears throat> is that what said founder should be doing, right? Like there's probably engineers who are better than you at doing this. Um, and in the early days, it's one thing, but at some point, right, your responsibilities are bigger than that. And, um, as the business changes and grows, you know, you have to adapt as well. Um, you, can, can I, can I ask you a quick question just for something that, an that open you, book. <laughs> um, so you said earlier, um, your job is to unscrew everybody. Is that how, like, what, 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 what was the word that you mentioned? It was really cool. Um, to un untangle or kind of get people unstuck or un. un I, I probably said unstuck, but I would have, I would have, you know, if we weren't recorded, put an F in front of that and. <laughs> right. But. So, my my question is, if you as the entrepreneur, and I'm not trying to make this a live coaching session or no, anything, please. but if you as the but, but if you as the entrepreneur are feeling the need to get people unstuck then, or, you know, un F, um, 
then what are you doing to get them stuck in the first place? Right. Oh, totally. It's wrong. But I, so, so I think of it. So you mentioned like five people with the same job description, right? So yeah. my first thing is, well, first off, you have five different people and those five different people aren't doing the same thing. Um, right. I think about the dynamic or, or how agile our business is. And there are times where let's say I have people working at the 50% level of what they're super passionate about. And the other 50% is the things yeah. that we're just kind of sweeping up shit. Cause we have to, um, I find that people get, at least our crew gets pretty mired sometimes in decisions and, um, and decisions are one of those things where Thankfully for me, and I'm quantifying this, I'm not saving babies. We're not in a hospital room. So if I make a wrong decision, somebody's not dying, right? Okay. Maybe, maybe we lose a little money. Maybe we lose a contract or something like that. But at the end of the day, nobody's dying. So right. is it better, right, to make a decision quick that has some resemblancy of confidence and be able to react faster to unscrew yourself because you realize it was the wrong decision and the culture be something like, yeah, we screwed up. Great. Get it out. Let's move on to the next one. Um, yeah. And, and we have to make, I mean, part of a business is making decisions all day long. What direction do we want to take? What color should it be? What words do we want to use? What is the theme of this? What is the theme of that? And, you can artificially make those things more important than they really are, right? People, I get, I get shit all the time because I spell stuff wrong, even though I use Grammarly and this and that. It's become part of the brand, right? People, in some regards, expect there to be something that's wrong. And it's not that it's not professional, but it's also more personal. Like, hey, yeah, the robot didn't write this. Yeah, there's a mistake. Great. Yeah. And then we play into perfect. it. There's, there's the mistake. We did it. Everybody can go celebrate. Yeah. Let's keep moving. Um, and so I love that you, sorry. No, I mean, I think, you know, so the unstuck is like, I want people to be at their, their top performing at their most hap at their happiest. And unfortunately for me, I think it's come a little bit at the detriment of myself because I ended up taking some things that you mentioned writing and getting paralyzed. That for me, that's the, like the minute I got to write something, I'm like, oh, Jesus, this is going to take me forever. And am yeah. I good at it? Sure. Do I like it? No, not at all. No. Like I epically exactly. hate it. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's also got to get done. Exactly. So I want to get back to the, the decisions that you talked yeah. about because I think it's a really, really, really important question. So uh, at some point you asked, think it's better to make decisions quickly and move on because you know we're, we're not well specifically you and i no, we're not, are saving, not babies. saving babies or, or, or curing cancer right um there are probably people out there who do that then i'd say maybe the answer is going to be a little bit right. different but, right please do not listen uh, to the right? following segment or do this at home <laughs> yes <laughs> that's right <laughs> but you know my my mentor that i had early early on um, he said something to me, it always stuck with me. Um, he said, the most successful people are really good at making decisions quickly with 70% of the information that they would like to have, totally. and which means they have a higher risk tolerance, right? Yep. Now, yep. that's why as entrepreneurs, typically we can make decisions more quickly. And then we struggle when the team takes so long because mm -hmm. that's a little bit different, right? They don't have that same freedom. And so what I learned during my business and also obviously talking to uh, other entrepreneurs, but specifically my experience is that if I make a decision and it's wrong, so if I have the habit of making fast decisions, as you just described, and it's wrong, then I can make another fast decision. Totally. But if it takes me forever to make a decision and then that decision is wrong, guess what? It, guess what? It's going to take me forever to Wait. rectify that. And that's, very much to the detriment of everybody. So one of the tools, actually I have two tools that I like to share, um, which I will do, um, which is kind of a way to, again, empower and give responsibility 
to your team. And the the one of them I, I stole from, well, not stole, borrowed and always give credit to Vern Harnish, who is one of the founders of EL. And I heard him say this at the 20th anniversary conference in Vegas. And he said, you know, you can ask your team and yourself, but specifically for your team, four questions. And if the answer to those four questions is yes, then that team member can make any decision within the realm of their responsibility. And so the four question, the first one is, does it benefit the client? The second one is, does it benefit our company and our people? The third one, is it in line with our mission, vision, and values, our, our core values, our purpose? And the fourth question is, am I willing to be held accountable? Okay. Mm -hmm. So if the answer to all of those four questions is yes, now people can make decisions, right? There's another tool that I talk about uh, in my workshop, which is Susan Scott, The Decision Tree, which is also a framework of helping people in your team understand which decisions they can make with or without you um, based on the level of risk, right? So if she calls it the decision tree. So if you think about your company as a tree, and I'm loosely paraphrasing Susan Scott here, um, if a leaf falls off the tree, it's not the end of the world. So if it's a leaf decision, you can find define what they are. You don't need a big stack of papers for that because that's just a waste of everybody's time and energy. Yeah. Um, and, and that's micromanagement too. You don't want yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But okay, you make the decision. You don't have to tell any about it, anybody about it. Just make the decision. Yep. If it's a branch decision, right? Make the decision, act on it, but tell somebody. Tell your manager, okay? So that we're prepared in case that branch yep. gets cut off. Yep. Also not in the world. The trunk decisions and the root decisions obviously are different. So then that's where you get more involvement, where you get more feedback. And the root decision, the CEO or the executive makes the decision but gets recommendation from their team. So yeah. there's a bunch of tools that are like super easy to implement to build a culture of faster decision. And because everything I'm talking about in a board is to give ownership and responsibility to your team yeah. so that everybody's working at what they're best at, what they love. And your head as the entrepreneur or as the CEO is freed up to really look at the bigger vision of the company and, and have time to recharge and have time with your family and, and create your own flow yeah. on how you want to do it. So yeah. yes, decisions are are real critical and empowering your team. Again, I was forced into it, right? Like I didn't want to answer the phone every hour. So I had to put some kind of framework in, framework in place. Let's let's talk about I, I, I love that because I, f I feel like that's one of our my biggest struggles is getting folks to realize that they're not disappointing me in any way or I'm gonna somehow get upset if the wrong decision is made, like, I, like, let's just go, like, please yeah, do not exactly. let me be in the but middle there's of a learning, There's a learning opportunity for you though, too, yeah. right? So say somebody makes the wrong decision and they've asked themselves the four questions, right? Yeah. So you can have a conversation and you can say, cool, you know, tell me why you thought it was better for the client. Why? Tell me why you thought it benefited us. Tell me how you feel this was in line with our mission, vision, and yep. values, yep. right? And they're going to tell you because they have thought about this. Yep. And then that's going to unravel a whole, a whole big book of knowledge, right? Right. right. Have, have I clearly communicated what our purpose is yeah, does yeah. everybody know if nobody knows what our purpose is that clearly they're going to make wrong decisions right so now it's a conversation mm. and now yep. you're coaching your team without telling them what to do yeah. right and the other thing on decisions that i really love about the model is as entrepreneurs what do we do and i'm guilty of this like i still am i know better i still do it right but i i'm mindful of it so it's easier for me to catch myself when I do it. But what do we do? Somebody comes to us with a question. It's like a puzzle. It's like, I know, I know, I know. I'll tell you exactly what to do. And then we have fun and we get excited because we yep. know the answer. Yep. It's amazing. Except who do we serve? Nobody. Yeah, that's right. You're serving yourself. Yeah. 
we, we served our ego because yeah. now we feel good about ourselves and we yeah. got a little pat on the shoulder and we're like, yeah, that's why I'm the boss. Woo-hoo. <laughs> right. But we don't serve our company. We don't serve our team when we do that. It's much better to say, tell me how you would solve this. And then you can say yeah or nay and why, but you're learning how your people think. It takes practice to make good decisions quickly. And so as the entrepreneur, we're, we're so often not looking at information that would help us grow our organization, empower people much more quickly because we don't know. Yeah. Let's, let's rewind the stakes a little bit <clears throat> because I think um, to have the point of enlightenment, you know, you've gone through, I'll say a tragedy, I'm trying to make it like a movie, I guess. You had mentioned you wanted to be able to take care of, you know, the, the kids, the family, you wanted to be able to do more than you were doing. Um, I was similar in nature. I was working for large tech company. I had worked 20, uh, 2,700 hours in eight months. Um, wow. <laughs> right. And even uh, the ping pong table to make up for that. Uh, yeah. This now, to, now grandma's life was on the line. So there was some internal factors that I wanted to be able to sleep at light at night, but notwithstanding my moment was, um, and this is before I was on my own. Um, but my moment was my son was three at the time and had come up and said, dad, why don't you love us anymore? And I was like, what do you mean? And oh. his, his thing was, you're never home. You're, you're, if you're here, you're not here. If you're not here, I don't see you for days. And ironically, at this point, I, I was working close to home. I mean, I was consultant at the time, but this gig was 20 minutes from my house. Closest gig ever that I could ever get. And I spent it, you know, at, uh, at this other place. And it was then that I realized it was that, you know, people say, oh, you know, you're dead. Look back, nobody's going to say how many how many hours you worked and this and that, but it was my three-year-old going, you know, what the hell dad? Um, and that, wow. that broke me. Um, like that really, that really, really broke me. And, um, and I think about it a lot and <clears throat> there was uh, there was actually somebody and I won't get into the story, but somebody early on um, had told me um, when I were, when we were having him, so it had been three years prior had said, there are things you can do one time and one time only, and there are things you can do one time, anytime, and don't screw up the one time, one time only because you're never going to get it back. And wow. I, some great advice. You're right. It helps put some things in perspective as to kind of what's important. And I think about those, you know, the decisions, as you say, right. And the root, the, the trunk, the branch, the leaves, um, you know, that goes so much further and, but you have to be able to also inwardly look and say, like, where am I at in this? You know, where, what do I really want to do? What do I really want my business to do? What do, what are, why are we doing this? Because if you don't know why the hell you're doing something, like, I don't want anybody working on our team that isn't passionate about the thing that we're doing. Cause if you're not passionate about it and there's five of us, what's the point? There's, there is no accounting department. There is, there's no departments. Like there's just us. So if you don't want to make right. impact, then it's useless. Don't, don't be here because there's days we're going to work really long. And then there's weeks we're going to say, screw it. We're off. Company's closed because we can do that. And so. Yeah. I, I agree. That's some, that's a really profound experience. Like I still have goosebumps hearing those words, daddy, why don't you love us anymore? My oh, goodness, that is, it's and you know what? You're not alone. I was in that boat. So many of us are in that boat. Right. Yep. And then we also, and, and I think perhaps as men, like not, I'm not trying to do polarized genders here or anything like that, but um, I, I, I feel like as a man and it's, we over generations been told that oh, yeah. we have to provide. Oh, totally. I, and I know that, right? So yeah. there's it's the same way women we have to, we've been told over generations, we have to take care of kids. We have to take care of kids. And now we've made so much progress as a society, as couples, as men and women, as, you know, other genders. 
but those those things still sit deep, right? Oh, and yeah. it creates a lot of guilt, right? Not it like... just creates a lot of guilt. And it's 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 this dilemma of well, I want to provide and I want to build something, and I also want to be a good parent. And and that's exactly I can 100 percent relate to that. And I think we all can. Yeah, it, it's funny. It's funny you bring that up because for as much as we pr have progressed, is as much as we haven't. And um, and I I I would hope to think that I'm the dad who is involved as much as he can and is at the things. And I have history that gets into all the reasons why as to I'm that. But it is funny the stigmatisms that still exist and how people assume, you know, men, women, whatever. Um, that I, you know, I don't want to be in that role or somehow I'm not right. Like I don't care. And it's like, no, I don't, I don't want to travel and stay in a hotel room. No, I want to be at home with my family. I, I know that seems right. odd, but it's true. Right. And, and until, until people, all of us, right. Kind of step back and say, whatever, whatever systematic change you want to make, whether it's those around you and whatnot beyond like these things, they, they do very much exist and um, they absolutely do which which kind of me back to this we need to know as you said why are we doing this i i yeah. in my book i call this the offboarding driver right be clear why are you doing this because here's the other thing if you offboard responsibilities from your plate you need to think about what you're going to fill your plate with yeah. freedom from yeah requires thinking about freedom to do what and if we're not purposeful about choosing what we want to do with our time the time is going to get filled for us again and that's not the point of this entire exercise right yeah. so we we really want to make sure we go back to why are we doing this and and what is the purpose and yeah. so that we can build something that is meaningful not just for us but for our families, for our teams, for our people and, and for the world. I mean, as entrepreneurs, we are so well positioned, better than anybody really, except billionaires, but most of our entrepreneurs. <laughs> um, we're, we're so well positioned to create and live yeah. the life of our dreams, right? And, and while making a difference in the world through our business, be it for people, be it for the world, be it for, for anybody, yet so many of us are burning out and waiting for all of this fun stuff to come later, right? And, and, and it doesn't have to be this. And, and on your note, by the way, where you said you'd rather not be traveling all over the world, mm -hmm. you'd rather be home. Um, I had an interview conversation yesterday um with somebody and we were talking about this um i, I mentioned in, in in my brand we want to have a fun and fear -proof. and fun like we have some kind of notion about what fun and fearless looks like mm. and what, what do we think about beach travel la 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 all the stuff that you see on social media right, right. so for I me like right now right so it it See right now, my fun and fearless life looks a little bit different. Oh, like, right. Yep. I, right? So I'm sure, do I travel a ton? Do I have a lot of fun, fun? Yes, but fun not just leisure, but to, it's all my life. I right. love writing my book. Like, I'm not actually, you know, love the writing part, but yeah, yeah. The, coming up with, with new ideas for thought leadership, I, you know, People are saying, well, when's your next trip? Because they're used to asking me that question. I'm like, I want to be home. So that fearlessness of saying, I'm also not afraid to say that right now my happiness and joy and my fun is right here at home, even though it's minus 20 Celsius out there right now here in Edmonton. It's pretty, pretty darn cold. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but it's cold. Um that's my fun and fearless right now. And I'm enjoying every minute. So that permission, that definition we need to make for ourselves. Yeah. And, and I think it's good to talk about it too, because it, it does ebb and flow. Um, you know, my kids are teenagers, right? We have a different, yeah. a different family life today than we did when they were not teens. We, and, and we can do things that are different now than we could not do before because they're more able-bodied. And one day, one of them, I mean, they're going to be gone, right? And 
it'll yeah. be a different, different thing. And, um, yeah. and I, and I think it all flows back to, at least for us and our team, it's like, there are these moments and, you know, like if you need, I tell them like, you need to go do something, go do it. Like if your kid's throwing up, go take care of them. What, what good is it going to do you half-assing it for the day? You're not like, going to be productive, no. Yeah. And you're going to feel horrible, right? Yeah. There's no go point. Go be mommy. Go be daddy. Like, your kids need you. The, the business should yeah. be able to sustain itself because you went and took care of your kids. And, uh, of course. And we get too wrapped up into some of that stuff and, you know, whatnot. So, I don't want to give away too much. We've yeah. been chatting for a long time, and I feel like we could take this conversation for another two hours. You've got a book. Really? We've got a workshop. You're going to be in Milwaukee um, next week. So if you're watching this after the 18th of November of 2022, I think it is. Um, <laughs> and even if you're not, I would say go to eowisconsin.org and we have an events thing and you can come and be part of an event and learn like we're learning right now. Um, but where let's, let's, I feel like this has been a packed hour of a, a lot of value and a lot of like, Hey, go think about these things where let's give people something concrete where what's the next step for those who won't be at the workshop, where can they find out more about you, your book, this concept, maybe they want to pull you in for some, for some work. Where does, where does somebody turn to you? Absolutely. Well, thank you for that opportunity. I appreciate it. Um, and if there's any questions, if people have questions when they, they hear me talk as well, and if you can't be at the workshop, very simple, michelle at michellehecken.com. Um, and that's Michelle with one L, uh, which is always a little bit tricky, but michelle at michellehecken.com. Hecken like heck with what the heck with Ian. So <laughs> michelle, Hecken, michelle at michellehecken.com. Just shoot me an email. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions or chat with you, um, about anything you want to know. Yeah. And I think now that I've been, I've been thinking about our conversation and if you're up for it, I think, you know, we're going to get together next week, um, and we're going to have this workshop and chat and whatnot. I, th I think we need to have a part two to this conversation because, you know, I will have been enlightened and gone through things. And, uh, I think the follow-up, you know, the, the action plan, if you will, of like, okay, we talked about it, Clark, you're really messed up. We know that there's a problem. We're going to go through fixing it. And then we need to talk about the plan to go do so. So maybe we'll follow this up with, um, a little more, uh, you know, actionable. Thing I would love that. Of the, you know, I think Clark. that would, <laughs> well, you know what? The, you're definitely on my here already and you're you're no more screwed up than every last one of us so <laughs> i like to do it positive of yes, the yes. Know, beautiful you, entrepreneur yes. and builder lots Clark, of opportunity and to make yourself that's gonna be in the workshop. <laughs> that's right I, I believe that every time we say I am followed by something we're manifesting something about us so uh, you I'm, know, I'm a bit of a stickler for that stuff I, okay. But I'm excited. I, I totally agree with that. And I'm so guilty uh, of self-sabotaging. Um, yeah. And uh, you're, you are spot on. Spot on. Yeah. Thank you for that reminder because I do it so often and it drives me nuts. We all do. We all do. And when we talk about awareness and how awareness makes our life better, well, it's practice, right? Not yeah. aware we can't change anything. Like I grew up telling myself, like whatever, teenager, like most girls, I'm too fat. I'm not tall enough. I'm yeah. too this. I'm too that. Blah, right. And and so, but when we become aware of it, we can catch ourselves. Yep. It doesn't mean we're going to do it right 100% of the time. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? The five times a day where we do it right makes a difference. So I think that's great. And I would love to do a follow-up because I think it would be amazing, even yep. for people who have attended the workshop, for people who saw the workshop but didn't attend it and have questions, or just people who want to go dig a little bit deeper and kind of pick our brains a little bit more so i'm more than happy to do that after yep and since we're going to be together i'll bring the gear so we can potentially do it in person because then it's even more fun more funners so sounds great 
Let's close with this. Um, what would be one piece of, uh, I, I don't want to say advice, but what would be one of your kind of call to actions or ask some, somebody that you think that they should do? Well, I, you know, the big, is that drives everything is creating that awareness for yourself. So if you can write down on all aspects of your life, what you want your life to look like, and then think about what you want your ideal day to look like once where you have energy, where you feel great, right? What's your ideal day? And, and just start with that. And, and maybe if you're going to join our workshop, come with a little bit of an idea. We are going to do some exercises around that because it seems like really simple, but we're so screwed up with all of the things that we've learned um, as adults where we have trouble kind of stepping over that boundary. So I'll lead to that a little bit. But if you can already start thinking about that because it changes everything. Once you're clear what you want, even if you don't go through the offboarding process, if you find a different way, you are going to make those changes in your business and in your life that serve you better. So that first awareness, I think, is really, really important. And the second thing to think about is to be purposeful. I, I know I say stop delegating completely and look at offboarding responsibilities and ownership, but what I'm really saying is be strategic and purposeful with what you work on and why you work on it and how it serves you and the company. So those would be my, my, my two things, whether you join the workshop or not, those are things you can do right now for yourself at home. And I'll, I'll add, uh, don't be scared, right? Don't be scared of change. Yes. You've to be intentional means you need to be vulnerable and, um, to do that, um, it's, it, it can be, I, I'm a completely different person at the age of 46 than I was at 40, but the last six years have been a lot of inward reflection and, uh, evaluation of, you know, what do, what do I even want? And each of those has come with a different point of alignment and readjustment and refactoring and yeah. still not where I want, but Hey, I'm not as, I'm more aware than I was before. And that's a good thing. Well, but we're we're enjoying the journey, really, right? So, yeah. it's yeah. never going to be perfect, and we're not never going to get to that perfection. That's right. But every incremental change we make can give us more joy and more freedom. That's right. Well, with that, we're going to come to a close. For anybody who is watching, this is our first time doing this, and we're, as I said, we're going to try to do more. Um, check out Michelle at michelleheckin dot com. Right? Did I get that right? Yeah. And uh, check us out at eowisconsin.org. And with that, go kick ass.